So, uh, I ran out of day yesterday, but uh, today's another day, another very nice day actually. So let's have another look at this voltage monitor, which is measuring all the cell voltages. 333, 328. Some of them are just alarmingly different to others. 332, 330, total 26.4. So I'm going to measure this with the DVM to see whether it's just this little cheap monitor unit that's wrong. Well now, I've got this um, variation in the uh, voltages. The hedge is being trimmed. This might have to wait. So I've measured all the cell voltages uh, by putting the DVM across these test points in pairs. And they're all within about, well, 10 millivolts or something like that of each other. So it would seem that the problem is this little cheap monitoring unit it just isn't very accurate it measures the cells as being all quite different 332 333 but they're actually not they're all well as I say within about 10 millivolts of each other so I'm not too worried I'm going to just put it down to this thing being cheap not terribly accurate also I seem to remember that this draws its power from just the first two cells so it's not surprising that it's making sort of erroneous measurements between maybe the first two and all the others. I honestly don't know, but I think it's good enough just to uh, act as an alarm. Now the next thing is to go and ride the bike and see whether this goes beep when I'm climbing up hills. Um, just see what it does, see how it performs. Right, well now I've just uh, ridden around for 10 miles or so, which was great fun because uh, I didn't have to pedal very much. So it's quite easy really. Now the cell voltages don't seem to have dropped much. 330, 332, 333, 26.4 is the whole pack. In fact they really haven't dropped at all. I didn't hear the alarm go off while I was cycling. I was kind of pedal assisting. So I probably didn't uh, put it under huge stress load. But I thought I'd um, charge these cells back up. So I've plugged in the Turnergy, which takes a 12 volt input. Can't see the screen very well. That's on LiPo, so I'll need to change that to uh, lithium iron phosphate, LiFePo4. Uh, not sure about the current, flat out, I'd have thought. And uh, let's do that. Now there is a bit of an issue here because the balance charge ports are all along this side and my balance charge lead doesn't come out very far. Oh, yes it does. I've just pulled it out. I don't want to pull it too far in case I stress it. Yeah, that's probably enough actually to plug that into there. Let's try it. Right, so the balance charge lead does just about reach from the battery pack across to the balance charger. The main charging lead is this, which I cut off the uh, original charger, which broke. That's uh, connected to the output of the Turnergy, and then the Turnergy's input are these two wires, which come from my 12 volt battery. Um, so I'm doing, oh, let me see that, a, just about a lifey balance uh, at 4 amps. I'm not quite sure why I chose 4 amps. Let me see if I can get a better picture of the display. Yeah, this is a lifey balance, 4 amp, 26.4 volts, 8 cells. Let's press and hold start. Battery check. So it's saying it uh, detected it as an eight cells in series. I set it for eight cells in series. Let's start. Current is going up. The voltage is also going up, which you'd expect. The time is clocking up. And the amp hours, or milliamp hours, I presume that is on the bottom right. The fan has started up. That all looks good. Now I think if I press ink, it will show me all the cell voltages. So 335, 336 across the board. Next page. 337, 337s and 6s. Well, they all look pretty well balanced, so it shouldn't have too much trouble with that. Now, I was trying to work out when this will finish. Um, it's 27.9 volts. Now, if I press 
deck it tells me that the end voltage is 28.8 so it's not a long way away any other information capacity cutoff 5000 milliamp hours safety timer 2 hours temperature cutoff i don't think it's got a sensor external temperature internal temperature in power voltage oh yes the voltage of the input from my battery that seems quite low 11.8 i suppose 4 amps and of course that's 4 amps at the high voltage hmm interesting so if the end voltage is 28.8 divide that by 8 i've just calculated it and it's uh, 3.6 so i'm waiting for these um cell voltages to get to 3.6 and they are currently 3.38 pretty much across the board so I'm waiting for 3.6 cool now there's just one final thing that's bothering me a bit here and I've just switched over to the LIFE discharge screen and it says that the end voltage there for 8 cells is 16 volts so it would discharge them to 2 volts each I think that might be a little low that might be adjustable I can't remember but my thought really is, and I'm kind of thinking, could Dacian help me here? Um, is that minimum voltage for Life Epo 4 cells uh, offload or underload? And in fact, are there minimum voltages for those two situations, offload and underload? I'm just not sure um, when I should be listening out for the alarm, this little thing here, when I'm riding the bike. Should it be when I'm under full power climbing a hill or where, or if it's uh, constantly alarming even while I'm stationary. It's just something I haven't quite got clear in my mind yet. So it's not quite as convenient a setup as it used to be where you just had a mains charger pack that you plugged in and uh, just charged it up nice and easily but this is now a genuinely solar powered uh, electric bicycle. Uh, the uh, Lithium pack is now, I think, almost a third the weight of the old lead acid pack, and it now charges from this 12 volt lead acid battery, which in turn is being charged from the 80 watt solar panel, which I've turned a bit to face the sun over there. So it's not quite the uh, mode of electric transport that I would choose, but I think it's pretty good. Electric bicycle, genuinely solar powered now. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the uh, outcome of that project. Cheerio. Now, just a quick uh, postscript to this because it seems to have gone into balanced charging now. You can see that cell 8 is 3.6 volts. That is the um, highest voltage it's allowed to go to. So I presume it's now sticking resistors across that to try and hold that down. But some of the other cells are as low as 3.37 still. Now the unit's completely cold. The heatsink's gone completely cold. So uh, it's not really doing any work now. It's charging the other cells. Well, I don't know whether it can charge the other cells while it's discharging the cell that's gone high. Um, if it is, it would have to do it through the balance leads. And of course, as we know, they're just tiny. So I imagine it's going to sit here for some considerable time now while it balances out, this is top balancing of course, balances out the um, these cells. I'm not sure how long this is going to take but of course I can't leave this now because um, I want the cells balanced and they are clearly way out. Cell 8 obviously got to 3.6 a lot quicker than the others. So cells 1 to 4 are all 337 or thereabouts and cells 5, 6 and 7 no, cell 6 is high, cell 7 is high and cell 8 is way high and this is where the balance charger does what it's meant to do and balances the cells but I imagine this process will be very slow Okay, cheerio.